quadratics completing the square. To complete the square, start off by opening brackets, then x, and then we're going to put a plus or a minus here with a number, all of that squared, minus, then brackets, whatever you've put here, the same thing goes in here, squared. So what goes here? Well, if you take the coefficient of the x term, which is 4, if you take half of that, and you always take half of the coefficient of the x term, you write it here and here. So write it with the sign there and just the number by itself here. And then you can just simplify. This is what we call completing the square. So you've got x plus 2 squared. That's a minus. This will be a minus. 2 squared is 4. There you go. And just to check whether this is correct, what I'm going to do now is um, uh, multiply these brackets out here and see if it gives me x squared plus 4x. So the x plus 2 squared means I need to write x plus 2 times x plus 2, like this, and that minus 4 goes here. So expanding the brackets, these two multiply to give x squared, and then these two multiply to give you 2x, and these two here multiply to give you 2x, and these two here multiply to give 4. There's the minus 4 from here, and as you can see, the 4 and the minus 4 are going to cancel. What have we got here then? x squared plus 2x plus 2x. That gives you plus 4x, which is the same as what we started with. So how would this differ if we had a constant on the end? So if we had a three-term quadratic to begin with. So let's say if that was plus 6. That plus 6, you're not doing anything with that constant at all until the very last step when you've completed the square and then you take that constant and this constant and you simplify them. So then you've got x plus 2 squared and then minus 4 plus 6 gives you plus 2. Here we're going to solve this quadratic equation but by using the completing the square method. Now to complete the square, as you've, se as you've seen in the previous example, it's the x squared term and the linear term, the x term, that you're focusing on, not the constant. So I'm going to leave the 12 on the right-hand side. So let's complete the square for the left-hand side. So completing the square will give x, and then half the coefficient of this term here, which is 2, so x plus 2, squared, this is always a minus, and then you take this term here, you square it, and that goes here. That's all equal to 12. Taking the 4 to the other side, so then you have x plus 2 squared is equal to, well the 12 plus the 4 will give you 16, and then to get rid of that square, if we square root both sides, and on the left-hand side, you've just got x plus 2. And if you square root 16, typically you would just say it's 4. But because we're solving an equation here, it's plus or minus 4. So then you've got x plus 2 is equal to 4, and you've got x plus 2 is equal to minus 4. So from this one here, we have x is equal to 2. And from this one here, we have x is equal to minus 6. And these are solutions to this equation. So if I substitute x equals 2 into this equation, it should give me 12. Let's test this. 
So we have x squared. So x is 2, so that's 2 squared plus 4x, so plus 4 times 2. So 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8, and that gives you 12. So that works. Doing the same with the minus 6. So x squared plus 4 times x. So minus 6 squared is 36, and 4 times minus 6 is minus 24, which gives you 12. So these are the correct solutions to this equation. In this example, we'll have a look at um, fractions and completing the square. It's quite common to get fractions when you're completing the square. So starting off then, so we're going to have x here. We know there's a square there. That's going to be a minus here. So half the coefficient of this term, so half of this, goes here. So that's plus 3, so half of that is 3 divided by 2. It was positive. And if you take the same number here and you square it, so that gives you 9 over 4, that goes here. So we have completed the square. Completing the square for this 3-term quadratic, so we're going to have x here as before, Half the coefficient of the linear term is minus 5, so that goes there. And that's all squared, like this. This sign's always a minus. And then this term squared will give you 25. So that goes there. And that minus 2, we haven't done anything with that. Let's just write that here. And then final step, simplify the constants, minus 27. So we've completed the square. So these examples that we've just looked at, every single one of these had an x squared term with a coefficient of 1. Now, you can still use the completing the square method when the coefficient of x squared is not equal to 1. Have a look at the next video for that.